Prosecutors are building their second degree murder case against George Zimmerman. You know by now he's the neighborhood watch captain who shot and killed Florida teenager Trayvon Martin. The latest evidence made public last week tests showing that none of Trayvon Martin's DNA was found on Zimmerman's gun. And if Zimmerman's attorneys argue self-defense, the prosecution could dispute that claim by saying Martin never got close enough to Zimmerman's gun to try to take it away from him. George Zimmerman's brother, Robert, is with us right now, along with our legal analyst, Robin Sachs. I do want to establish here, Robert, good morning to you. Uh, you're not here to defend the case so much. That's you're right. here to talk about your family and Martin's family. And you brought a statement that you'd like to begin with. That's right, exactly. Okay. So go right ahead. Thank you, Steve. Sure. I must begin by stating that the only persons qualified or authorized to speak on matters regarding the legal proceedings involving my brother, George Zimmerman, are his attorneys. They are the only ones who will speak on his behalf. My words are based on my recollection and are my attempt to illustrate the original sentiments of my parents, my sister, and myself at the time of the incident. This statement must not be abbreviated, nor my words modified or edited in any way. Furthermore, these words are not, nor should they be interpreted as, a statement made on George's behalf. The time has come for all to know the truth about our feelings immediately after Trayvon's passing. Due to countless developments and complications beyond our control, it was not possible to individually address Mr. Tracy Martin, Ms. Sabrina Fulton, or Mr. Javaris Fulton in a private setting to express our sympathy or to offer them words of comfort in the days immediately following February 26. If there had been an opportunity immediately following Trayvon's passing for his family to hear from the members of the Zimmerman family they have not yet heard from, we would have expressed our condolences on the loss of their son and brother. The truth is that we would never take comfort in the knowledge that any human being has passed away, no matter what the circumstances surrounding their death may be. From the first moment we knew what had transpired, we were deeply aggrieved, and in keeping with the teachings of our faith, we prayed for the departed. Our family values compel us to seek peace and reconciliation within ourselves, and to extend these virtues to others. As Trayvon's family remembers him, I would want them to know that at the time, each of us prayed for him, and each of us in our own way remembered him as well. Moving forward, I pray they find the peace of the Holy Spirit and that it illuminates their hearts. All right, that statement live right here from Robert Zimmerman, the brother of George Zimmerman. Robin? Yeah, I'm, I'm so curious. I mean, here you are here in Los Angeles. And when, well, first of all, when did you decide to write, when was the statement written? Uh, there were drafts of this statement actually started by our family, uh, and uh, it, couldn't, it couldn't be read or broadcast at the time because my brother's bond had been revoked. So it was written already when the case had started, when That's you knew right. that there was going to be a case. Did you write this? Uh, I wrote most of it. I had some help. Did Mark O'Mara look at it? Did he approve uh, it? Mark O'Mara, I don't want to involve Mark in this because one of the conditions of George's bond is that he's not supposed to contact, even by a third party such as his attorney, any member of uh, Trayvon Martin's family. Um, so, so Robert, uh, people watching this will say, since he can't, you are. That's right. Okay, you, and you want to extend this to the family. There are some people, and pardon me for, for saying these things, but this is that's part fine. of this interview. Sure. There are people who say, well, you don't want to talk about the legal aspects of it because that's up to the attorney. You're doing a PR campaign for your brother. Uh, I'm trying to reintroduce our family in the right light. I think for a long time we didn't have any control of how we were being portrayed as a family, and that there's been a whole family who's paid a price for that. And you understand, because of this case, it's not just a case about somebody dying. It's a case where so many people bring their histories, their culture, their race, their predispositions into it. I think even you will notice that the people who are staunchly on your side are one kind of people, racially, culturally, politically, and on the other side, and there are sides on this issue, are, are different from you. Are you trying to reach out to them? I'm trying to reach out to everyone so that we can all unite as Americans to stop throwing around the word racist. Uh, at the time, it was clear that the only information that a lot of people had about my brother was a uh, old photograph, and they referred to him as white. Well, he's never been white and never will be white, but people use that as kind of their galvanizing cry uh, to equate somehow what had transpired with, with a murder or a racist. And fitting into the scenario of black and white crime through, throughout history in that way. All right, Robin. Okay. But also, he's been called and dubbed a gun-toting vigilante. 
Do you agree with that label? Absolutely not, no. He's been described, unfortunately, George was a college student, George was a mentor to children, George was a homeless advocate. He was anything but uh, a neighborhood watch captain, certainly not self-appointed, but that sells more newspapers and it sounds better on the air and that's why the media referred to him from the beginning to keep the story running. As there a was a network that did a pretty terrible thing. It misedited a sequence of him talking to the dispatcher where it sounded like he was making a racist comment. Later on, when it was revealed that that was only done in editing and it was clarified to everybody else, did you get the feeling people say, oh, I got that, or the other image stays in their mind? No, I think there's been a lot of stones thrown by a lot of different people, and that was just one of the stones in the bucket. And after you throw the stone and kick someone when they're down, it's kind of late to do any help uh, by just simply just retracting you know, one, one statement or publishing that it was a mistake in editing. I think that people who make those kinds of mistakes in a premeditated way have an agenda, and that agenda uh, has hurt our family. Do you think your brother is going to get off? I, I'm not going to comment on whether or not he's going to get off. I think that's. I hope that he gets fair treatment by the judicial system. Do you think he has so far? Uh, I think that uh, he has a good attorney, and I think his attorneys, uh, Don West and Mark O'Mara, are doing their best to make sure that he will. All right, Robert, uh, you're, it's your brother. It's your family. Everybody's affected by it. It's true. But if you're Trayvon Martin's family, watching you right now, mm -hmm. What would you think your reaction would be? You know, it's really hard to put myself in their shoes. I know that um, it was important to start out reintroducing our family by reaching out to them directly. So I hope that they can find, I, I read the statement as sincerely as I could, and I hope they find some sincerity in it. Would you like to be in touch with them? Uh, I don't think before there's any kind of legal resolution in the case that would be wise. Uh, but I think, you know, who knows one day when this is all resolved, what will happen. I know you don't like to get into the specifics, but uh, it was a big moment when no DNA from Trayvon Martin was found on the gun that your brother had. Mm -hmm. Your reaction to that? Well, I don't ever recall, ever recall my brother saying that there was a struggle for the gun. I assume that in a struggle, that's how people's DNA would get passed to any object. I don't ever recall that ever being part of the actual record that was presented in court. But uh, I think it's best left for his attorneys to react to that further than that. When you first heard that your brother had shot and killed someone, were you surprised? What I first heard was that someone had died and I thought it was a member of my family. And what I heard next was that uh, George was forced to defend himself, that he was attacked uh, brutally, that he was uh, right now wounded, that he was bleeding out of his ears. Uh, I was very saddened uh, that he had told me that his uh, calls for help had gone unanswered, and he was very defeated by that, uh, that nobody bothered to come. You know, thank God people called, and there is that evidence now to present in court. So then aren't you mad? Aren't you mad that everyone's misunderstood if that was what you had heard in your initial moments as to what this was about, and now you're apologizing? I mean, don't you think that the Martin family should be apologizing to you? I think that, uh, that I, I don't know about that the Martin family should be apologizing, but I, I remember George in his interview called upon people who had perpetuated these lies and mistruths to apologize because it's clear now, uh, seemingly clear now, uh, that the FBI has gotten involved and investigated that not only with George, but I can, I can speak for my family, we are not racist, we never have been racist, we're not white, we're a mixed race family. And, uh, you know, the FBI has a lot of tools at their disposal, and, and I think... And to, excuse me, to some extent, you are here this morning to say, look at me. Do I look like a redneck, racist person, and I represent my family? Isn't this part of what you're doing? Well, I look like my brother. You mm -hmm. know, that, that, uh, that should speak to your viewers. You know, I look enough like him that my home was compromised, and I had to leave my home because mm -hmm. that could have been a potential uh, place that perhaps the Black Panthers or other vigilante groups would have attacked or at least uh, visited in order to find my brother. Some, some people are going to ask, why are you coming here to local Los Angeles KTTV to do this interview? Why aren't you, you know, out on doing the national market right now? Uh, you know, our family really respects the judicial system, and we don't, uh, 
we don't have any agenda other than to reintroduce ourselves in the right light and to have maybe a, a second look by the American people who have had such strong opinions. So is this a tour that you're doing, basically doing a lot of shows and a lot of interviews? This might be a kickoff of something of mm -hmm. a new role that has kind of landed in my lap. Okay. What about your sister? I'm just curious about her. We haven't heard anything about her. How is she doing? My little sister was instrumental in keeping our family safe at the time. We had a geographical distance between us. She had to relocate her family several times and she's very instrumental. Also, I know Steve, from your background, you work with people who have uh, Alzheimer's who suffer from dementia and the partially sighted. Well, our grandmother has vision in only one eye, suffers from severe dementia, and moving around four and five times with a person who's 87 years old who can't remember from 30 seconds to the next, anything, uh, has been a great challenge and my sister has really evolved in, in her role supporting our mother and her father. All right, uh, you got a, your chance to say what you wanted to say here and, and uh, we'll see what happens next. You know that people watching are either watching and impressed with you and maybe rethinking a position or they're thinking you're just a a slick guy doing a nice job. You understand that, right? Is your brother yes. watching right now? I mean, we are streaming online. I, I, I really wouldn't know. I would have no idea. All right. Uh, Robert Zimmerman, brother of George, thank you for coming in this thank morning. Thank you. All right.